Good morning and welcome to worship at Lamb of God Lutheran Episcopal Church in Fort Myers, Florida. We are so glad you are with us, especially today, as we have learned a few new things about Zoom and how to change things up pretty quick when it goes down worldwide. So again, we are glad that you are here and I'm especially glad for the staff members and spouses who are here with us this morning on an emergency coming in. Thank you all. Thank you, thank you, thank you. I wish you could all see what they've been up to in the last hour. We are blessed. We are blessed. So because things have changed dramatically this morning in the way our service was set up, I'm going to confess right now I'm truly not, don't know what I'm going to say to you during the sermon because it was an interactive sermon and that interactivity has gone away this morning. Nonetheless, uh, there will be some creative things that we can show you. Also, just a reminder that today we do come together to remember one of the sons of the congregation here, Isaiah Wright, and I spoke to him just a minute ago, and unfortunately we won't be able to do the things we wanted to do there either, but he is a significant part of this worship this morning as well. Again, thank you for joining us, and now let us begin to worship. I'd like to invite Val, please, to come forward. They went to Jesus, and Jesus asked them, Who do you say I am? They answered, You are the eschat eschatological manifestation of the ground of our being, the kergima of which we find meaning in our interpersonal relationships. And Jesus said, What? Faith doesn't have to be that hard. Life doesn't have to be that difficult. Sometimes we just have to live God's love. Sometimes we just have to live what we believe. And so we are here simply to sing, to celebrate, to worship God. As we gather here this morning, we are ever reminded of the community of people that we are. And while we are not physically together, we give thanks for we are a community. And our hearts are touched by one another and with one another during this time. We also give thanks for the continued offerings that you continue to give here at Lamb of God. Through these offerings, we continue not only to support the community here, but also the outside world through the judicatories of which we are a part. And for those things, we give you thanks. May the offerings brought this day be used as seeds, planted faithfully and nurtured lovingly, so that God's way may be realized anew in this world. Amen.
A reading from the Holy Gospel according to St. Mark, the 8th chapter. Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus went on with his disciples to the villages of Caesarea Philippi, and on the way he asked his disciples, Who do people say that I am? And they answered him, John the Baptist, and others, Elijah, and still others, one of the prophets. He asked them, But who do you say that I am? Peter answered him, You are the Messiah. And he sternly ordered them not to tell anyone about him. This is the gospel of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Praise to you, O Christ. Lord Jesus, you are a Lord who walks beside your people. So we pray for people who walk for justice. You are a Lord who raises up those who are bent low. So we pray for those held down by the grindings of life and the indifferences of the world. You are a Lord who feeds the hungry. So we pray for all who long for bread and the means to provide it. You are a Lord who celebrates the small and the insignificant. So we pray for the children. And for those who are never noticed, you are a Lord who says, follow me. So we pray for courage and faith in our hearts that we may take up the cross and find it leads to life. Well, good morning again, and what I'd like to share with you this morning is that God works in God's own way, and when all of this happened with Zoom, and we just found out an hour ago here, well, after being panicked, which we admit to being, then there were some giggles, because it's really out of our control, it really is, but God does provide, and God too has a sense of humor. And the reading this morning that was chosen was chosen for a number of reasons, but the part that has made me giggle even more this morning is this question. Who do people say that I am? Now, if you were to ask me that right now, who do people say that I am? You might not have wanted to be here an hour ago because I can assure you it wasn't the person that I really want to be. But that was a side of me that was in shock at how do we put this all together. Who would you have said that I am? I also want to share with you that that's not a question a lot of us would ask anybody else. Who do the people say that I am? How many of us really want to hear the answer to that question? How many of us have the courage to ask that question of other people and then wait for their response? I know I'm not one of those people. And what made me think about that more than anything else was the cutest Facebook post I have seen during this COVID-19 social isolation. And when I saw it, all I could think of is that she is probably the sweetest teacher I have ever, ever seen. Wendy. So I started the years as a teacher, and I found that one of the best ways that I can process the whole transition to online learning and teaching is to write a song. So I wrote a song. I'd like to share that with you guys now. Here we go. <laughs> so I'm wondering before you before you guys kill that video, can we do it again? We want to do it one more time. Let's let's get it all right so she does the introduction. One more time. We got time because, you know, this is all by the seat of our pants this morning. It's all right. 
while they're setting us up again, I want you to share. I want to share with you also that I showed this video to our grandson four times, and every time he saw it, the giggles went deeper and deeper and deeper. Who do people say that I am? Is the question that Jesus asks this morning. So as some of you guys might know, I'm a music teacher, and I found that one of the best ways that I can process the whole transition to online learning and teaching is to write a song. So I wrote a song. I'd like to share that with you guys now. Here we go. say that I am. So Wendy, is that how we reacted this morning? <laughs> yeah, we just kind of screamed, who do people say that I am? But in all seriousness, it is a question that you have to wonder about because we really only know what we know about people. And some time ago, many, many years ago, I was put into a situation where this question had to be answered by one of my colleagues in seminary. And each of us had to, I'm going to call it, do a critique of the other person. So when we were together at Teaching Parish and it was his turn to share what he thought about my preaching and my, my skills and worshiping, the poor guy had a meltdown. He started screaming at me and saying to me that you're perfect, everybody loves you, you don't do anything wrong, life is so easy for you, I have to try so hard and I make a mess of everything. And he went on and on and on. And all I kept thinking to myself was none of that's true. I'm not perfect. I don't have the skills that you say. You don't know me. You don't know what's going on inside of me. You don't know how nerve-wracking it can be to get up and preach. You don't know anything about me. But you see, he only saw one side of me. And so when people said, who do people say that I am? He's repeating what he heard from people, but he never bothered to get to know me or to ask me, how is it you feel? How are you experiencing things? How does this work for you? It became so difficult for us to communicate that we ended up no longer being in the same class together. Who do people say that I am? It is a question that Jesus asked of Peter this morning. Jesus wanted to get a pulse on the community. So he asked Peter, and Peter came back with the answer. John the Baptist, people are saying you are. Elijah, and some of the other people were saying you're a prophet. But then Jesus asked him the biggest question of all. But who do you say that I am? Who do you say that I am, Peter? Peter had run out of answers, the things that he pulled out of the air. So Peter said something he thought Jesus wanted to hear. You are the Messiah. And then Jesus ordered him not to tell anyone about him. One would think at that point, just by reading this, that Peter really knew who Jesus was. He answered correctly, the Messiah. But several verses later, as Jesus is explaining what his journey is going to be like, that he's going to run into difficulty. He's going to run into people who don't believe in who he is. He's going to run into people who, who, when you ask them the question, who do people say that I am? 
they're going to tell him he's a demon, that he's a blasphemer. There's all these things, and it's going to get rough. All Peter has experienced thus far is the good things about Jesus. He does miracles. He can walk on water. He can raise a little girl from the dead. He can stop the hemorrhaging in a woman that we heard about last week. He's a great guy. Who wouldn't want to hang around with him? That's not the only thing there is to know about Jesus. And so Jesus asks Peter that deliberate question, who do you say I am? Do you not know who I am? Because after Jesus explains the difficulty he's going to go through, Peter says, no way. You're not going to do that. You're not going to suffer like that. We're not going to let those things happen to you. And Jesus turns to Peter and says, get behind me, Satan. Stop. This is the way life is. You have to take the good with the bad. That's life. And that's the way it is in life. You take the good with the bad. What Peter was lacking at that point in time was faith and experiences of Jesus, even when life is difficult. He didn't trust the process, so to speak. He didn't trust that Jesus would be there through the thick and the thin, the good and the bad. So what Jesus is asking of each and every one of us this morning is to stop and ask yourself the question, who do you say that I am? Who is Jesus in your lives? What experiences of Jesus are you having, especially during this time? And what I'd like to share with you that I know about this community is that we are beginning small group ministry next week. And it's been amazing to see the excitement in everybody as they've signed up and become part of the groups. I've got Val here this morning, and I don't even know how many we have total in the groups so far. Forty people have signed up. Forty people, and there's more of you out there. We're waiting to hear from you. The groups are lively, fun, committed people who want to stay connected with one another during this time so that we know how all of us are experiencing Christ at this time. In addition to that, we continue, continue to do our food drives every Wednesday. And I'm telling you that thousands of dollars have been received and thousands of pounds of food have been received. This is experiencing Jesus and Jesus in our lives. And today, we come together as a community to celebrate Isaiah Wright. Isaiah has been a son of this congregation for about eight years. You know who he is, you all do. You might not know his name, but he's usually my assistant minister standing right here. He is a high school senior. And unfortunately, this year, as you all know, graduations have been postponed, at least until July, and hopefully it will happen there. So this morning, we were ready to celebrate Isaiah and all the things that he's accomplished. And in a few more minutes, we'll have that opportunity. So this is the experience of Christ. We take the good and we celebrate it. We continue doing ministry together. And when it gets rough, we turn to that same person to help us to be strong. For those reasons, when people say, who do you say I am? And the answer is, he is our God. Amen.
for you. Let us pray. O oh God, Holy Trinity, we pray for the church that we may grow in our awareness that the hand of God is in the people and events in the world around us. We lift up all who serve you, Pastor Carol, church leaders, and the staff and volunteers whose guidance and faithfulness are important elements in maintaining our community of faith. Word made flesh as more people become sick, healthcare workers and first responders are working longer hours with fewer supplies and with more risk of contracting the coronavirus themselves. Renew their energy and sustain them on their long shifts. Inspire and invigorate the researchers developing better tests to diagnose and eradicate the virus. Abba, Father, we pray for all who are struggling economically. May God calm their fears, guide them to resources that will sustain them, and help them to be open to others who wish to support them. Almighty God, we pray for our departed loved ones, remembering the word from Revelation chapter 21. He will wipe away every tear from their eyes, and death shall be no more. Neither shall there be mourning, nor crying, nor pain anymore, for their former things have passed away. All this we pray in the name of Jesus and through the power of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Praise and thanks to you, God, for by your word you made all things. You spoke light into darkness, called forth beauty from chaos, and brought life into being. For your word of life, God, we give you thanks. By your word, you speak to us and call us to witness the way of your self-giving love. For your word of life, God, we give you thanks. By your word, our strength, we pray for our nation and the world as we face new uncertainties around the coronavirus. Protect the most vulnerable among us, especially all who are currently sick or in isolation. Grant us wisdom, patience, and courage to face these days with compassion concern and act of service, trusting that you abide with us always. For your word of life, God, we give you thanks. Faithful to your word, God. Amen. So Isaiah, again, we celebrate you this morning, and we look forward to seeing where God leads you. We know that seminary may be part of the path that you are on, and we are so incredibly excited for you. And if all the people could see you now and you could see them, the people here from Lamb of God, they would be celebrating you and clapping hands and cheering you on. They also sent you many cards of well wishes that we have here for you. And so we want to send you off with the proper love and the blessing for this day. 
and Wendy will get a hold of your mom and dad and be able to get these to you as soon as possible. But know that you are in our prayers and we give thanks for your ministry here at Lamb of God and for your future. Amen. Gathered into one by the Holy Spirit, let us pray as Jesus taught us to pray. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory now and forever. Amen. May the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord's face shine upon you with grace and mercy. May the Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. Amen. Go in peace and share the good news boldly, joyfully, and intentionally. Thanks be to God. Amen.